exorcist. Based on a true story. And the girl became totally possessed. I wouldn't believe what I seen, that I saw with my own eyes. I heard the voices myself. It was wild. It made the exorcist movie look funny compared to this. But it all happened and it all came about because she was smoking in bombing fluid. I don't know about you, but I don't think it's a good idea to smoke in bombing fluid. She was partying with her friends. When you open a door to drugs, you give yourself over to a force that's beyond yourself and you do not have control. She opened the door, she became possessed, and the story went on, but it was an open door. So I want you to follow with me this morning. Good housekeeping with God's little approval. But sometimes it starts with a good house cleaning. I want you to follow with me. There's just a few points I'd like to make this morning about this scripture. And give us some insight concerning spiritual things. The book of Luke chapter 8 verse 41. The Bible says, Behold, there was a man named Jarius, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet, and he begged him to come to his house. For he had a daughter about 12 years old of age, his only daughter, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitude sprung to him. Then in verse 43, all the way down to verse 48, it's what I preached on Thursday about the woman, the issue of blood, who touches him and gets healed. But then the story goes right back to verse 49. While they're still speaking, someone came from the uh, ruler's house saying, Your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, said, Don't be afraid. Only believe and she shall be made well. And when he came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the little girl. Now all who wept and mourned for her. But Jesus said, Don't weep, for she's not dead, but she's sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn or mocked him, knowing that she was dead. Verse 54, But he put them all out. He took the girl by the hand, saying, Made her little girl arise. Verse 55, It's a promise to all of us this morning. And that's God's renewal in our life, revival in our life. Verse 55, then her spirit returned. And she arose immediately, and he commanded that she be given something to eat. Not to sidetrack, it's not worth noting that this man, Jairus, he's a ruler. But he falls at Jesus' feet and he begs the Lord to come to his house. You know, what opens the door to God moving in people's lives is humility. It's that willingness to come and lay down before God and say, you know, God, I don't care what anyone, this guy's a ruler, he's got a position here, Jesus says at this time, his daughter's dying. I mean, when you're in the kingdom, you care about the The Bible says he allows these three disciples. Well, one of the reasons is that he's going to transact kingdom business, spiritual business. And when you're transact, transacting spiritual business, you need to have spiritual people. If we're going to raise a child, if we're going to bring divine life into someone's life, it's not just going to happen. There needs to be certain people involved. That's why when someone wants to get saved, they don't go to their party friends. What? I talked to the guy the other day, he says, Carrie, if I really needed help in deliverance and drugs or my marriage or this, you know, I wouldn't go to none, none of the people I would know. I'd probably sit down and talk to you. So what? Because I know none of my friends can help me. They're more messed up than I am. <laughs> but he has enough brains to realize to transact kingdom business, to transact spiritual business, people need to be spiritual. Right. If you're in need, you want someone that can actually help you. You go see a friend when you're in great need and you're depressed, you end up drinking with them. Right. So they're getting help. But the, the reason is because in the spiritual arena, number one, atmosphere is very real. An atmosphere that is right is not just, it don't just happen. The word atmosphere simply means the surrounding influence. So Jesus is going to work a miracle, but in order to work this miracle and bring divine life, 
He wants to make sure the atmosphere is right. Yes, in order to make the atmosphere is right, there's certain people that there. And there's certain people that And you just sit down. And get, that's why I have prayer meetings. So I'm just like, why do you have prayer meetings? Number one. Truth of God. Okay. We come to prepare our hearts to receive from God. So we come sometimes an hour before service. We try to lay aside the world and the best we can. We try to focus our mind on the Word of God and get our hearts ready. We come, we start singing, we start clapping. How many know that's how the Bible talks about a sacrifice of praise? Because sometimes it is a total sacrifice on our part just to clap and to sing. Because we don't feel like clapping, we don't feel like singing, and we're discouraged at times. We don't feel like raising our hands, but we do that in the hands. In your own life, in your own heart, you can't control all the inside of your own heart. That's your heart's position. Your heart's your heart's heart's position. I guarantee you, God's going to move again in your life. Jesus takes her by the hand and says, Maid, arise. She begins to walk. Romans says, Now that we've been raised from the dead, now we can walk in newness of life. Amen. Then the Bible says, Jesus says, I want you to give her meat. Jesus said unto them in John 4, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. And you're here this morning. The will of God for your life is not to start the work, but to finish what God's called you to do. You want to find a need, you want to find nourishment for your own soul so you continue walking on in God. Do the will of God for your life. Not just start it, but finish it by the grace of God. Can you say amen? amen. 